Hello there. It is uh, October 29th, Thursday, uh, but we're going to do the comic reviews today instead of yesterday because I was feeling kind of unwell yesterday. I decided that some rest might be uh, a better use of my time than yelling at a video camera. But today, comic book reviews, starting with All-Star Section 8, Issue 5, the penultimate issue of this miniseries. And this one is quite a doozy. It is um, a spirit trip, um, like a you know a guide, a, a guide for um, for six pack, um, and six pack spirit guide through this adventure into his own soul. Is a rapping phantom stranger, and that that's pretty much all I should have to tell you about this book. It is probably the like it's probably my favorite issue of this book so far. Um, mainly because I just love the idea of a rapping Phantom Stranger, um, as, as Sydney's spirit guide, um, as he's kind of recovering from being drunk, so, um, like in these previous three issues. And Phantom Stranger leads Sydney through, like, the DC afterlife, um, like the mystical zone, and so you hear you have, like, Doctor Strange and, um... The Spectre, and why can't I remember this guy's name? Um, Boston Brands? Dead Man. That's his name, Dead Man. Um, and uh, Phantom Stranger spent some time kind of shitting on how convoluted the DC mystical, like the mystical side of the DC universe has gotten, and how Heaven and Hell have like revolving doors now. Um, there's a guest verse by Etrigan, who of course is also a bit of a rapper, because he rhymes all the time, um, where they advertise Garthinus' uh, previous previous work with Etrigan, and like tell DC to publish more trades of that. Um, and then, as you can probably tell from the cover, if you recognize any, any of these other characters here, um, uh, Sydney reunites with the former um, Section 8. For a bit, and uh, that's part of his spirit journey too. Um, and uh, that—that's pretty much this book is uh, a kind of a, a leap into uh, Sydney's kind of inner inner consciousness um, or subconscious or whatever, but also the spirit zone of the uh, DC universe. And again, it features a rapping Phantom Stranger, which is kind of amazing. Um, so. I, I just really enjoyed this book. Really, really fun. And now a book that I've been, again, on and off with, um, decided to hop back on because I heard really good things about it and I was kind of in the mood for what I had heard. Aquaman, issue number 45. I honestly forget the last issue of Aquaman I read, um, but yeah. like as strange as this issue will seem, um, considering... It begins with Aquaman waking up after a fight on an alien planet. Um, not a fight on an alien planet. After a fight, Aquaman wakes up on an alien planet. He was accidentally teleported there by his now enchanted trident, which he doesn't have on him. Anyway, despite this being the first page, this book actually drops a lot of helpful exposition. So I feel like it's a good, like it was, it was a good book to, for me to hop back on in. Um, Hawkman explains that he was in a battle with Poseidon or something um, after his trident got enchanted and he accidentally teleported to this planet. Um, as Hawkman is exploring, he finds this thing, which is a uh, kind of a war machine from Thule, which Hawkman uh, explains is a civilization that existed under Atlantis that decided that they're going to conquer Atlantis and then the Earth and then... Aquaman figures from this thing being on an alien planet, they were also planning to conquer alien planets. Um, and, uh, yeah, so Aquaman, mercy kills it, essentially, before he himself succumbs to his own wounds, and then he is rescued and wakes up in an alien hospital, in an alien civilization, and then we get some more, both backstory as Aquaman pieces together, okay, so I'm here, and this thing's here, and you guys seem to recognize me, or whatever. 
um, but also figures out what he's going to do next. Um, it's a fish out of water story, um, which, I mean, you know, being that it's Aquaman is not entirely, uh, not entirely out of the, uh, the equation, I guess, at all times. Um, but yeah, again, as strange as this issue is, and as kind of slow as it is, it, you don't really get much actual story in this book, not a lot of action beats, um, or anything. It was a pretty good issue to hop back on in, again, lots of internal monologue and exposition and stuff as Aquaman tries to, uh, get his bearings straight again. Um, and I enjoyed it. I mean, I wish more happened, but as a jumping on point, as someone who hasn't read this book in a long time, uh, it provided enough exposition for me to get caught up, I feel. Um, and at the very end, there's a big kind of dramatic question as to, okay, well, what's really going on here and why are these people helping Aquaman and all that. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm going to jump on this book for a while and I hope I enjoy it because I need some swashbuckling heroes in my life again, I assume, I guess. That would be fun. Um, now, instead of covering the other DC books I bought this week, um, because there was a weird imbalance of DC and not DC books, um, I'm going to move on to uh, the not DC books, and then in the second part of the six reviews, I'll be reviewing the rest of the DC books, uh, which are all Bat Family related. So this week, we're splitting between Bat Family and not Bat Family. So moving on from DC, uh, we are going on to a book I'm excited for. The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, ah, Squirrel Girl, issue number one. Only the second number one so far this year. Um, yeah, so uh, if you remember, I loved the other Squirrel Girl books that came out this year. I loved the previous issues. I thought they were really lighthearted and fun and charming um, and funny. And this kind of continues that. We get a um, not a lot of backstory. They're kind of just continuing from where they left off with um, Squirrel Girl and Koi Boy and Chipmunk Punk and all the other characters, but we get some character introductions on the bottom here, and we start with Squirrel Girl rescuing a family from a fire and doing it in a very Squirrel Girl way, um, by kind of jumping out of the building with the family attached to her, um, like just all holding on. And then we, uh, catch up with our team as we find that, uh, Doreen and her friend, um, whose name I can't remember, even though it was just on the character introduction sheet, but very helpful. Uh, Nancy, I thought it was Jenny, it's Nancy, uh, are moving into their new apartment um, for their second year of college, or second semester of college. I don't, I don't know which. Um, but yeah, and so we get a quick tour of their new apartment. Um, Doreen brings up that she is a new Avenger, again, which makes Chipmunk Hunk and Koi Boy a little bit jealous, it appears. Um, and then Nancy and Doreen have a quick lunch with uh, Doreen's mom. So we meet the parents, we get a little bit of backstory um, in terms of, you know, like Doreen's baby pictures and embarrassing baby stories. Um, this book makes it very explicit that Doreen is not biologically nor legally a mutant, um, which is kind of a, a, a joke um, if you've been following like Marvel licensing things. Um, and it extends to, like, merchandise like toys and then, like, movie rights and stuff that which characters are and are not mutants has a lot, like, just in, in terms of how things are defined in legalese is really important. So that's kind of a, a meta joke that Doreen is legally not a mutant. Um, so she can be used in, like, Marvel pictures and so Fox doesn't own them, their movie rights and other weird, complicated, not really funny stuff that I find funny anyway. Um... And then the team gets attacked by Brain Drain, um, who uh, Doreen and Nancy handle with appropriate squirrel girliness, um, which means that after kind of hitting him a bunch, they decide they're going to rehabilitate him, um, because that's what Squirrel Girl does. Um, and so after the fight, they have a, a uh, <laughs> let me find the page, they have a robot friend repair sequence, um, or just robot repair montage scene. Um, I got my words wrong. But so yeah, it's Squirrel Girl still being Squirrel Girl. Not a big change in art, in tone, and anything really, um, which I really enjoy because I really enjoyed Squirrel Girl as it was. Um, so 
more of the same Squirrel Girl. Still fun, funny, lighthearted, and all that other good stuff. I heavily recommend it. Now the last book I'm going to review in this piece of uh, the review stuff, what I'm doing, can't words, um, is Odyssey number 8. And we are uh, very far now, very dug into um, the 1001 Nights, um, you know, the Arabian Nights. Um, instead of Homer's Odyssey, we kind of switched um, stories here, which is very Arabian Nights in itself. And in this book, we get um, kind of the backstory of um, of Cloth, um, which is again very similar to the backstory of the kings um, in the Arabian Nights. Um, can I show this panel? Oh my God! I can show I can show a full spread of Odyssey, guys. This is a miracle. So the boy that um, became friends with uh, he of Troy starts telling he of Troy the backstory of Cloth and all that. So again, stories within stories. And we find out that after the brother kings were exiled here, um, they decided to make it a paradise because it, they, they, they felt, you know, it's our fault, everybody else shouldn't be punished for our mistakes, so let's give them somewhere pleasant to live. And while they were doing that, their spouses uh, decided to cheat on them with each other, um, and they threw a whole bunch of orgies and everything, and, um, I can show most of, well, I can show this page, so, yeah, the spouses are cheating on one another, and so the brothers, after finding about, after finding out about this, um, decide to go on a slaughtering spree, where, I can show this page of the slaughter, because even though it's a slaughter, there's no nudity. And they kill everybody involved in the orgy that their spouses were holding. And uh, decide to, again, like, make a law that, you know, very much like in Arabian Nights, that every night um, they will wed a, a new bride, and then in the morning that bride will be murdered. Um, and I can't show that page because nudity. Um, but then that story, which is the setup to Arabian Nights, where Scheherazade is then the new bride of that knight who decides that she's going to tell a story in order to prevent her own death and hopefully uh, get rid of this very, very barbaric system. And that story quickly turns into another, involving a girl trying to run out of the city to avoid this when she is hunted by other people. Um, And then that, of course, turns into another story that involves, or that catches up, catches up us, catches us up with, a uh, hard sentence, with, uh, Queen N, or N-A. Um, so again, stories within stories turning into stories about stories. Um, and I'm, I'm just loving it. I love the art, I love just the narrative structure of it, how it does take, the, like, this very heavy inspiration from the classics. Um, and how we're moving from, you know, Western literature to um, Middle Eastern literature, I think, is, like, really cool. I'm not stuck in just one part of the world for inspiration. Um, I think that's a really smart thing that, uh, that that Fraction is doing here. And I'm just I'm just loving this entire book. It's completely unique in comic books. There's nothing else on the shelves like this, um, as far as I know. Um, so there is a bit of a novelty to it, but it's also being done incredibly well. Um, I'm not reading this just strictly because of the novelty or because it's fun to look at, but because the actual storytelling, um, like the actual words on the page are like very carefully placed, very deftly um, done. So it's it's just like incredible literature that I'm I'm really enjoying. And like um, the other issues of Odyssey, along with some tweets, there is a bit of a, a back matter essay. Um, we get one from. Fraction, and then one from uh, Daddy Coleman, who's a guest kind of essayist. So again, you get some learning with your comic books, which is always fun. And that is it for this part of this week's comic book reviews. Uh, as I said in the next part, we will be reviewing the Bat Family books, uh, which this week we get we get pretty much everyone. We get Robin, we get Batgirl, we get Grayson. And then we have Batman um, as a god and see what he's doing there. So if you're excited for Batman stuff, 
keep your eye out for that one, which should be up later today. Um, but before that, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, if you like this video, like it. Subscribe if uh, that's your prerogative. And um, yeah, any comments, the usual, the usual comments, questions, I will try and get to them. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me for some more comic book reviews.